patience for. Just you know, the students and, you know, who acted badly and you know, like at times it was like a switch turn off and on. At times it was Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. I didn't know what to expect. Sometimes when I was really on edge, she would, you know, and I would just feel and I would take a breath and say, I, you know, you know, she, you know, didn't get mad and she actually was happy with me. Like one time I was sick uh, and she, you know, she was really, really understanding. Um, and in the spring when apparently I had sometimes, not all the time because I didn't think of it all the time, but sometimes I talked in like a, you know, pretend voice when I was in elementary for some reason. And I was very confused when she did not get mad at that, but she rather laughed at it and she was excited, you know, it's, you know, it's like she was kind of making a fun out of, you know, funny out of it, like, you know, and she wasn't being, um, um, you know, she wasn't being embarrassing, she was like, tell her, go tell, and, you know, let's go tell the other teachers, you know. And I was very, very confused. I did not know how to take it. I didn't know what to feel. I didn't know how to think at that moment. But so anyway, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself still. So the first day I went there. And I was excited. I was eager to start. I was ready to start the day. Um, I was excited to meet her. And the first day when I walked in, the first thing I noticed was, and she was probably standing at the sink because there was a sink. If you walked into the classroom, you, there was a sink along the side where you could wash your hands and then there was a big you know table with kind of like a you know little you know you know chair um on one side of it and chairs around it um and there were all the desks lined up and then her desk was over to the um to the uh, the, what side of the room was it at? Um, yeah, that side, over to the west side of the room. So kind of the southwest corner of the room. She had glasses on. That was the first thing I noticed, which I did not expect. And maybe this is just coincidence, but sometimes when people do the slightest thing to change their appearance, their character changes, and I, and I didn't care for this because I barely got to know her and I wanted to see her without the glasses, but I didn't say anything, just because why would I say that? Um, I kind of had a little bit of disbelief, like, you know, is this her, because this is not the person who was at the open house, but no, it was her, and I forgot how she sounded in her voice, so her voice sounded very different, and I can't remember how her voice sounded, but it's the type of voice, so if you know, who, and I'm going to make this comparison, if you know who Abby Lee Miller is, then you know that she has one of those voices that sticks with you, that kind of just, you know, is kind of a bane and kind of, kind of gets in your head and, you know, you remember it and it, you know, kind of, you know, it's a little bit, 
disturbing, it makes you uncomfortable, it's tense, that type of voice. Um, so think along those types of terms, and when I cite Nina Spons later on, then, you know, oh my goodness, there really is a resemblance between Abby and my fifth grade teacher. Um, and I wish that I watched the show Dance Moms sooner, because I would certainly be feeling an impact um, if I saw it then. So I sat down, got my stuff, sat down, um, you know, at desks. We were in teams. There were four desks, and then maybe it was just my table, but there was another desk tied in, and, and, and I asked, when are we going to start? And she said, oh, let's, you know, just I'll give you, you know, a few moments to kind of chat a little bit, and then, you know, then we'll start. And I was, you know, I was thinking, you know, okay, so I kind of sat and maybe tried to attempt to say something, and then everybody was talking about their, you know, get, getting to know each other again, talking about the summer vacation you know, the normal stuff. So then, uh, then she had us sit down. She was up in her chair. We were sitting on the rug. She introduced herself. Um, she introduced, um, you know, just what was going to be happening, who she was, her rules, you know, this and that. Uh, M Mrs. Wilson, who was my associate, fourth grade, came in, and, and, and she said, you know, for those of you who have siblings, raise your hand, and, and I did not know the meaning of siblings. I, you know, I probably didn't know or forgot siblings. Um, and, uh, I think that, well, so just, just certain things were not as they were, it was kind of a change, and, you know, not exactly the pose are, but, <laughs> well, apparently. But the thing that's, the thing that was interesting, and the thing that I agree with, agreed with, was out of all of the stuff she said, I only have one rule. She said that the rule was respecting yourself. Respect yourself, you respect others as well. I don't have that many rules because I would think that you, you know, you, know, you would know all the other ones. Why should I have to go through? That was one of the things, and then I remember one day in the afternoon, she had had us sit down again, chatted about bubble gum. When I went to middle school, um, you could not chew bubble gum, and it, you know, and it's famous kind of all around, like you know, it's kind of forbidden. She allowed it. She allowed it in her classroom, and I'm not going to sit here and think, oh, what a revelation. No. Because it's just bubble gum. She said, as long as you're not blowing bubbles, which I didn't even know how to blow bubbles, you could have it. That was her rule. And I was like, that's interesting. That's, um, that is interesting. Okay, she read a story called First Day Jitters, which is like a children's story. Um, and so then the, um, um, then the morning continued. She talked about, um, you know, the, you know, the expectations for what, the days would look like and things and kind of hinted at us going to the Annette Nature Center, which would happen later, um, which is kind of a separate can of worms. We had lunch that day. I remember going out to the playground at Wilder before they, you know, 
tore down the old one and put up the new one, which you can go and see. Now I remember walking along the little pebbles, like, in between the gravel and the grass, and kind of trying to balance myself. That afternoon, she used the worm, you know, was forceful using your resources. That was kind of a kind of a thing that we had to, you know, we were expected to do and had to accomplish in fifth grade. And I remember sitting down with a um, reading lesson kind of thing. And she said, by the end of today, you're going to be sick and tired of hearing me talk in the morning. That's what she said. And there was a slight kind of getting mad at Zane, the first little thing that happened, um, which actually happened, you know, in front of the class. You know, he, he, you know do you want to, you know, stay after on the first day or something? Oh, and I didn't, you know, think much about that. That was, you know, that was like the least thing that happened yet. So later that day, I, you know, at the end of the day, I, um, you know, I remember bumping into my fourth grade teacher and hugging her. And then I realized that I kind of missed her um, a little bit. And again, don't tell Shelly that. And I was feeling kind of a bittersweet feeling at the end of the day. I have to say that. That I did miss the fourth grade. I mean, it was the first day, so, you know, you know it would get better and I would get more used to it. And, and so I did, you know, other things for the, for the remainder of that afternoon. And then that evening we had chicken pot pie with a crust that did not taste very good. And when I was going to judge the taste, who did I have in my mind before I did that? My teacher in my mind while I was sitting at that table. Had the evening, next morning was the second day, the summer day. And that was the day when we would switch um, which, you know, the whole fifth grade thing was to prepare for, um, middle school. So we're preparing for, you know, the bigger thing. So that morning she had us sit down, um, sit down, like, you know, she was sitting in her chair again, we were sitting on the rug. And she told us that we would be going over the two teachers, the first being Miss Brooks, Miss, who would be doing extra math lessons. The second teacher was um, Miss Jacobson, who would do science and social studies, but science to begin with. So it would kind of go back and forth. Zane was sitting right there, and he asked the question, is she going to take us to the moon? And my teacher made a comment, um, you know, and I don't remember what it was, but it was along the lines of, um, really? No, that was disrespectful. You, you know, it was something like that. Um, you know, it wasn't, and I don't know if it was exactly you know, a hundred percent audible or not. But um, I think that my teacher was unprepared for us and how we would act. And when I say us, I'm not, I'm not talking about myself. She was unprepared for how Zane would act and how everybody else would act. Um, and we, uh, and I, and I was unprepared for her and her, you know, demeanor and everything. 
the day of the open house, I'm kind of jumping back and forth here. When we were, when I was in the driveway, I asked why, you know, it's like, why can't she not be firm? And my mom said, well, if she's not firm, then everybody would be dishing around. Well, there was dishing around, and it was probably not enough as it was, but I, you know, but I hate to say that. Now, when we got to Mrs. Brooks and Miss Jacobson, who were over to the other sides of the building, so the green and the, you know, the blue side of the building, when I first met Miss Brooks, when I first was in her class, I was a little intimidated at first. My first impressions were, what am I being thrown into? What have I gotten myself into? Because she was just kind of having a, you know, like a jockey type of personality. And I just did not care for that. But very, very soon, um, she became, um, um, she became nice, you know, her first name was Heidi, and, you know, I got to like her, and that was just, you know, that was just her personality that I just, just did, you know, did not expect at the beginning, and, uh, as I got to know her, I, um, really, really liked her, and then I started wishing that I was with her and not my fifth grade teacher who apparently was trained with the special ed area more, you know, that I was kind of part of at the time. Then we switched over to um, um, Miss Jacobson, who, who had brown hair and who reminds, reminded me of um, um, of Idina Menzel. She looked um, kind of like Idina Menzel. And the very, very first day she had on a short navy blue shirt with tan, you know, pants that were kind of, they, they came mostly down and then flip-flops because it was summertime. And, um, and when I went into Mrs. Brooks, classroom, you know, there was this other person there that, you know, it was her and I didn't know it was her until I went there. And so we stood along where the lockers were because they were in the same place as my fifth grade um, room was. And she said when she was taking attendance, you know who you are, so I'm going to start listing off names and you can sit down. Um, um, at, you know, maybe we could choose the place we were sitting or the place that she pointed at. She started listing names. We sat down. She got to, um, you know, she introduced herself. Um, and she said, I can be very nice and I can be fun, but I do understand that there was a time and, a, you know, and a place for that and being serious and being you know, you know, of course she would say something like that. And if I had to put them in order, she would be right between Miss Brooks over there. Um, well, no, she would be over here. Think of like a number line. Think of the positive and then the negative. Miss Jacobson would be right in the middle. Um, so, it progressed day three, day four, we did, you know, kind of went back and forth and, you know, did, you know, science projects and, and looked at the, you know, the different spheres later and did a variety of things, you know, looked around and looked at different, you know, and then, um, you know, I didn't mention this, but on the second day, there was something called, like, um, it was an acronym for something, but it was called GROW or something, where we sat 
in a little, um, and it was like a, um, trying to think, it was like in a big room, like kind of a multi-purpose room, which was blue, uh, after, you know, it was like, I think right before lunch, where we, you know, it was extra waiting practice, and we, we started out doing that, and then we just stopped and didn't do that anymore. Um, that day at recess when, you know, my associate was there and, you know, standing outside and I, you know, usually sang because I was little and I was, you know, unique in that kind of way. She came out with like a dish that she was eating for lunch. I'm talking about, um, you know, Miss Jacobson. She came out with this you know, this, this thing of pasta was like, you know, pasta with like a bolognese sauce. And then, you know, Mrs. Wilson, you know, said, Ooh, that looks good. Um, you know, and then she said, um, my dad made it. And I was kind of drawn to her in some way. And if my teacher um, my fifth grade teacher was very famous for saying the words, you know, you know, saying the phrases, figure it out and knock it off. She, you know, the, her big word when people were talking or, you know, act, just, just acting up would be, hey, and she would, you know, scream it, kind of, you know, I don't know. Um, so, kind of, you know, bled into more, you know, day after day after day, and one day in the month of September, it was early September, early to mid-September, um, at the very end of the day, the first rampage page 